and welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Rate and review the show at kevinmd.com slash rate. Subscribe at kevinmd.com slash follow. Today on the show, we have a longtime Kevin MD writer and commenter. Richard Plotzker is a retired endocrinologist. His latest Kevin MD article is titled Doctors as Organizational Stewards. Richard, great to finally meet you and welcome to the show. Nice to be here. We'll get into your article in a little bit. Just briefly share your story and journey to where you are today. Okay. I go back to the medical class of 1977 when the world of medicine was different. Our professors were World War II docs, a few Korean docs. Then out of residency, I became an internal medicine hospitalist for the VA when only the VA had hospitalists. After a while, it looked like I was kind of languishing mm -hmm. and was already doing the endocrinology at, at the VA since they didn't have an endocrinologist and decided now this is the time to get formally trained, which I did in the late 1980s, then was in practice for 20 years. And as solo practice became more difficult, as, as most of the physicians have found out, accepted a job, stayed there for eight years until a reasonably planned retirement in 2018. Now, as you reflect on your decades long career, what would you say are some of the biggest changes in medicine that you've observed? Oh, that, that's a, a, a long question. There, there are a number of demarcation points. The, the electronic record is one mm -hmm. where, where you check boxes in lieu of thinking verbally, which is you know, what you were trained to do in college. To get into medical school, you had to do pretty well in college, and that means answering essay questions, not just circling boxes. So, so that, that's the, the biggest demarcation, and that's here to stay. It has its pluses and minuses. The minuses are, are more noticeable first. The pluses are a little more elusive. I mean, it's kind of nice to be able to just sit at my screen and go look up x-rays mm -hmm. and, and actually look at the films. However, people of my era are a little spoiled because we used to have somebody in the, in the team call down to the x-ray department, go down in a group and look at the films. Mm -hmm. So I got used to doing that myself. But you know, in, in recent years, my residents seem more interested in the report than in the image, even though the image is much more easily retrieved. So th there's also a, a change in what's valued whether it was better then or, or better now, you know, I, I guess no time is really better than right to spin it. Sure. So let's talk about your Kevin MD article. It's titled Doctors at, as Organizational Stewards. Now, for those of you who get a chance to read your article, can you just walk my audience through it and share the story of why you decided to write it? Oh, sure. Being retired, we kind of look for something to do. And you, you learn that when, when you, you don't have to go to work every day, you're not getting phone calls every day, you're kind of still a doctor. You think like a doctor, you get your subscriptions, you belong to your organizations, some things you give up, some things you don't. But you're not in the midst of things. I mean, it would, I, I got out right before COVID, and I kind of miss not being in the fray. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a bit of a regret but you're still a doctor and the opportunities to be a doctor don't, don't disappear. I mean, the state of Delaware has a program for retired doctors to engage in public health in, in various ways. And as COVID came along, our Orthodox synagogue basically closed down because we don't use electronics mm -hmm. on, on the key days of of the calendar year and then it could be reopened. Well, who are your experts? Well, the doctors. 
So the, the uh, congregational president assembled some doctors and said, what do we need to do to have worship? And we got together and, and decided what to do. Mm -hmm. Some we did well, some we think like doctors who did poorly. We don't ask for advice that we don't have. We pool our ignorance mm -hmm. and come to a, an average answer. But you know, e even without requirement, Doctors, you still are members of their gym. They're members of their house of worship. They send their kids to school. They're scout volunteers. You know, we, we engage in a lot of useful things that have value, mm -hmm. that our, our medical experience in the right circumstances can contribute to better than anybody else's experience. And, and reopening COVID was one of those. You know, what's safe, and you, know, you need to know that as a physician, but you also need to know how your congregation works. Mm -hmm. you know, where do people gather? What, what are the traps? I, I assume it's the same for the, you know, the people involved in scouting or the people involved in the PTA. Should your school open? Shouldn't it open? And how do you decide? So we had our meetings. And as people who read the article can figure out, some went well and some kind of exposed our Achilles heel, both as doctors and also as an organization where, where you kind of see, well, you know, our, our organization doesn't even know who our experts are. It's all done from somebody's memory. Mm -hmm. We can't even figure out who knows how to paint a wall if we need the wall painted. So you see, you, you learn something from the effort. Now, working as a physician, and I assume you were in solo practice for a lot of it, doctors tend to work in silos. They, they work by themselves. How did it feel for you now that you are working as part of this committee? How was that transition? Well, interestingly enough, everybody on the committee, our, our congregation is all on Medicare, an older group, and everybody on the committee was in solo practice or, or a small group. So, you know, we're, we're all used to being very independent, having our own agendas, maybe resenting somebody else interfering mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of a little skittish about going outside ourselves. You know, do, do we really know how to keep the air clean? No, we don't. Are we going to ask somebody who does no, no, we're in charge here. So you, you kind of think like a physician. I don't know if being in solo practice is quite the villain on that. You, you, even in the years when I was employed, which was about half my career, there, there's a streak of independence. Mm -hmm. And yes, you can be part of the team and should be part of the team. But... Mm -hmm. You can also be kind of critical when you think the team is going wrong. How was that transition for you when you practiced for decades and now that you went to a planned retirement? Was it difficult for you well, to disconnect from clinical medicine? The, the key word is plan. I, I planned this you know, technically from the, the, my first residency paycheck when they took out uh, Social Security and, and a little bit for the pension fund. And you know, always had my key means of retiring. But I actually planned this about five years in advance, that I, I will work until uh, a, a certain time. And then, you know, the skills get a little bit rusty, you get a little bit tired. Toward the end, I was the only endocrinologist there. And you knew that, you know, just, just like the athletes, they know when they've peaked mm -hmm. and when it's time to let the next person take over. I've always had good residents. I know somebody's going to take over. Now, for those retired physicians who still want to maintain a little bit of a connection to medicine, what kind of options in general do they have? I can tell you what I do. I don't know what everyone else does. Uh, again, the, the state of Delaware has a, a program for that. Our regional medical center 
set up a program about two or three years ago for late career and retired physicians. I've given a couple of presentations there. It's very much dependent on a champion to maintain it. The champion left and now it's collapsing. I still get my New England Journal and my JCENM. I have a quota that I read in the New England Journal. It's two articles per week. I look at what's on Kevin every day. Thank you. And, you know, there are, there's always something that, that kind of catches my attention that, yes, this is very interesting, but it would even be more interesting if you were to take this insight and, you know, don't feel particularly shy about comment. One of the nice things about Kevin is that, that they don't, either they don't have trolls or they screen the trolls out, uh, unlike most social media. So, you know, there, there, there are the, these forums where you can still be part doctor, but even when you're not doing medical activity, the imprint of what you did for the last 40 years, looking at the tail, dealing with decisions that didn't go well, dealing with side effects, th those are generally applicable everywhere. Do you miss clinical medicine? I, I miss the patients. I can't say I miss the electronic record. I don't. I was not fond of, of the metrics. You didn't call these last 200 people with their lab results. Yes, I did. But it says on the, on the computer that you didn't because I didn't remove it from the box. <laughs> but yes, I did call them. I, 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 I miss having people take me at my work. But I, I think the retirement was planned and it was at the right point. And the activity reasonably replaced. We're talking to Richard Plotzker. He's a retired endocrinologist. His latest Kevin MD article is Doctors as Organizational Stewards. Richard, for those doctors nearing retirement, what kind of advice do you have for them to smooth that transition? First advice, make sure you can afford it. And because if, if, if you don't, you're going to have some very big un uncertainties. So you know, don't do it until you're, you're ready to. Unfortunately, some people will be exited out either, either by loss of health or by, you know, in, in this day of consolidation and layoffs, my hospital is here and your hospital is gone where you didn't meet your metrics. So some people will be involuntarily evicted. But I, I guess the, the, the best advice is have something else that you can do. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that you know, don't expect to go to the golf course every day unless you would have gone to the golf course every day. But that was the passion that was deterred by having to make a living. But, you know, ha have something that you like doing that's going to keep your mind engaged, that's going to keep you socially immersed. I, th I think what I miss from COVID is the collapse of uh, the University of Delaware senior program, where the value of being part of that is, yes, we get to learn from experts in the course, but you also get to sit in the lounge with the other, other people who've also had careers, and they are very, very interesting people. Physicians who do clinical medicine also become very adept at interviewing other people and finding out about them. And that, that's a skill that can be maintained in many forms. If it was satisfying when you did it as a doctor, it's going to be satisfying when you do it when you're not a doctor. And my final question, what are some of your take-home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? Well, I think mo most of the articles on, on Kevin come from younger people. And what you see when you read them is that, hey, you didn't discover this first. Somebody, you know, there, there were crises before COVID. There were malpractice crises in, in the 1970s. There was 
you know, disruption from flexor that you're, you're not flexor, you're not the first person to deal with medical disruptions. It's been there before, learn from it. And the other message is you don't know what the world is going to be like in 40 years when you're ready to retire. You, you make your decision when you're in your 20s and have to sign up for organic chemistry and make sure you really want to do that. Mm -hmm. Because you know, for, for all the people who talk about side gigs and escaping, there are a few equivalent escapes. I mean, the, the, those escapes are pretty rare. So, you, so make sure you like what you're doing. Richard, thank you so much for sharing your time and insight. Thanks again for being on the show. Okay. Thank you very much for having me. Had a good time. Thank you. Thank you.